King's Landing, King Egon II's Master of Whispers, Larry Strong, the Clubfoot, had taken time to draw up a list of all of those lords who had gathered on Dragonstone to attend Queen Rhaenyra's coronation and sit upon her Black Council. Lords Kautigar and Balarion had their seats on islands within Blackwater Bay. Thus, as Egon II had no strength at sea for the time being, they were beyond the reach of his wrath. Those Black Lords whose lands were on the mainland, enjoyed no such protection. With a hundred knights and five hundred men-at-arms of the royal household, augmented by three times as many hardened swords, Sir Kristen Cole, Lord Commander of the King's Guard and Hand of the King, marched on the nearby castles of Rosby and Stokeworth whose lords had only recently repented of their allegiances to Rhaenyra. He commanded them to prove their loyalty by adding their levies to his own. Cole's now much larger host advanced upon the wall harbour town of Duskendale to the north of King's Landing. The lords of Duskendale, House Darkland, was sworn to Rhaenyra. Despite the size of his host, Cole managed to somehow take the defenders by surprise. The town was sacked. The ships in the harbour set afire, and the Lord of Duskendale beheaded. His household knights and garrison were given a simple choice between swearing their swords to King Egon or sharing their lord's fate. It is said that most chose to keep their heads and join Cole's forces. The castle of Rook's Rest was Sir Criston's next objective. However, unlike Duskendale, House Staunton were forewarned of their coming. Lord Staunton closed his gates and defied the attackers. Behind his walls, his lordship could only watch on as his fields and woods and villages were burned, his sheep and cattle run off, and his small folk put to the sword. When provisions inside the castle began to run low, he dispatched a raven in a desperate plea to Dragonstone for help. The bird made it through Cole's archers and arrived as Rhaenyra and her supporters were mourning the death of Sir Eric Cargill of the Queen's Guard and debating the proper response to Egon's latest attack at the heart of Dragonstone itself. Though shaken by the attempt on her life or the lives of her sons, the Queen was still reluctant to attack King landing directly. Maester Munkin states this was because of the horror of kin slaying. It is said that Maegel the Cruel had slain his own nephew, Egon the Uncrowned, to take the crown for himself, and he was also involved in the death of another nephew, a Prince Viserys, who was in his captivity. Thereafter, Maegor had been cursed until he bled his life away upon his stolen throne. Set in Eustace claims Rhaenyra had a mother's heart that made her reluctant to risk the lives of her remaining sons. The court for Mushroom alone was indeed present for these councils. He insists that Rhaenyra was still so grief stricken by the death of her son Lucerys that she took no part in her own war councils altogether and left Corlys Velaryon, the sea snake, and his wife Princess Rhaenys Targaryen in command. Some scholars say that in this case, Mushroom's version of events seems the most likely, as we know that nine days after Lord Staunton dispatched his plea for aid, the sound of leathern wings was heard across the narrow sea, as the dragon Maelies appeared above Rook's Rest. The Red Queen, she was called, for the scarlet scales that covered her, the membranes of her wings were pink, her crest, horns and claws bright as copper, and on her back, in steel and copper armour that flashed in the sun, rode Rhaenys Targaryen, the queen who never was. So Kristen Cole was not dismayed at the sight of Rhaenys and her dragon. Rather, Egon's hand had expected this, counted on it in fact. Drums beat out a command and archers rushed forward. Longbowmen, crossbowmen, both filling the air with arrows and quarrels. Scorpions were cranked upwards to loose iron bolts of, of the sort that had once killed the dragon Maraxis in the Sands of Dawn during the time of Egon the Conqueror. Maelies suffered a score of hits, but the arrows only served to make her more angry. She swept down, spitting fire right and left. Knights burned in their saddles as the hair and hide and the harnesses of their horses went up in flames. Men-at-arms dropped their spears and scattered. Some foolishly tried to hide behind their shields, but neither oak nor iron could withstand the heat of a dragon's breath. So Kristen Cole sat on his white horse the whole time, shouting, aim for the rider, 
through the smoke and flames. Maylies roared, smoke whirling from her nostrils, a stallion kicking in her jaws as tongues of fire engulfed him. In that moment, it may have seemed that all was lost for Sir Kristen Cole. He had no defence against the power of a dragon. But then came an answering roar. Two more winged shapes appeared high in the sky. The king, Egon, astride Sunfire the Golden, and his brother, Aemond One-Eye, upon Vagar, the last remaining dragon of the conquest. Kristen Cole had sprung his trap and Rhaenys had come snatching at the bait. Now, the teeth closed around her. Although never tested in battle before, Princess Rhaenys never lacked for courage. She made no attempt to flee, and with a glad cry and a crack of her whip, she turned Maelys towards the foe. Against Vhagar alone, it may have been possible she might have had some chance, with the larger dragon slower than smaller Maelys, and thus more cumbersome. But against Vhagar and Sunfire, together, her doom was all but certain. Such is the courage of Rhaenys. She too knew her fate was lightly sealed. The dragons met violently a thousand feet above the field of battle below as balls of fire burst and blossomed. So bright that men below swore later that the sky was full of suns. The crimson jaws of Maelys closed around Sunfire's golden neck for a moment until Vagar fell upon them both from above. All three beasts were spinning towards the ground, striking it so hard that stones fell from the battlements of Rook's Rest half a league away. Those closest to where the dragons fell did not live to tell the tale. Those farther off could not see through the flames and smoke. It was several hours before the fires gutted out, but from those ashes, only Aim and One Eye and Vagar rose unharmed. Maelies was dead, broken by the fall and ripped to pieces upon the ground. And Sunfire the Golden, the splendid golden beast, had one wing half torn from his body, but alive nonetheless. His royal rider had suffered broken ribs, a broken hip, and burns that covered half his body. His left arm was the worst. The dragon flame had burned so hot. The king's armour had melted into his flesh. But King Aegon II lived. A body that is believed to be Rhaenys Targaryen was later found beside the broken carcass of her dragon. But it was so blackened that no one could be sure it was her. Beloved daughter of Lady Jocelyn Baratheon and Prince Aemon Targaryen. Faithful wife to Lord Corlys Velaryon. Mother to Laenor and Lena Velaryon. Grandmother. The queen who never was. Lived fearlessly and died amidst blood and fire. She was 55 years old. In total, 800 knights and squires and common men lost their lives that day. Another 100 perished not long after, when Prince Aemon and Sir Kristen Cole took Rook's rest and put the garrison to death. And with that, the first dragon battle of the Dance of the Dragons ended, while King Aegon II won the day. Rook's rest would impact both the Blacks and the Greens directly and shape the events to come. Thank you.